This is the 415ers podcast brought to you on the Odyssey Sports Podcast Network coming at you twice a week here in the offseason, and three times a week in the regular season. That's Mark Randy. I'm Evan Giddings. Please download, rate, subscribe wherever you get your podcast from. Download the Odyssey app and please download the 415ers using it. Okay, Mark, uh, the other thing we wanted to discuss this week was, you know, taking a look at a minor, uh, a deeper dive into the the schedule. We talked about maybe some of the tougher stretches, uh, strength of schedule, how it might play a little bit more differently than the uh, the percentages would tell you at face value. But but who could sort of surprise the 49ers this year in 2023? I, I have a couple of, of teams pegged down. Um, non-coincidentally they're all on the road but before i i, I get into mine uh where, where do your where does your mind go when you think about i don't know the 49 ers schedule and which stretches could be more difficult than others um so this is an interesting one and when i first looked up the schedule um i don't know how you originally reacted evan but i just immediately was like okay i think the 49ers will start four and oh like it looks like they could do that. And then I, I started, you know, thinking a little bit more about each matchup. You're on the road at Pittsburgh. That was not a playoff team last year. Um, and that's what I was initially basing my rapid reaction off of. And then you're on the road against the Los Angeles Rams, just a pitiful team last year. But of course, you expect them at least week two to be, for the most part, healthy. Um, you would expect that if they're not, it is, disaster has struck a second year in a row for the Rams. Um, but that was my first thought. But if they're healthy, they still have uh, you know a lot of talent. And then after that, you have the New York Giants, who of course were a playoff team last year, but not all too impressed with what they did. I don't know. It, it seemed a little bit more fluky to me than anything. Uh, and then you're at home against Arizona, and and I'm my initial reaction to that is the same. They are terrible, but that's why I thought they would be 4-0. Uh, but I, I dove into it a little bit more, and Pittsburgh on the road for week one, throw out you know who they have at quarterback. Um, and Kenny Pickett had a decent close to last year. I think he'll probably be better, and the team as a whole might be a little bit better. TJ Watt likely gonna, going to be back after he was out for a lot of last season. Um Pittsburgh does not lose home games in week one. They, they're just not one of those franchises that do. Like, how often do they lose a week one at home? It, like, almost never happens historically. So I think I just immediately overlooked the beginning of the season, Evan. And then you throw in the fact that who knows if Brock Purdy is going to be healthy. Who knows who's going to be at quarterback for the 49ers. I think for me, the stretch that surprised me and could potentially stretch the 49ers Maybe it's the first month of the season. I, I wrote it up as 4-0, and and, and I'm already having second thoughts on it. So, I don't know. No, I, I'm 100% with you. Although, I don't just look at week one. I also kind of look at week two. Fair. As well as the third, only because the New York Giants are on a Thursday night. And, and I think that those games are a little more wonky th than people want to give credit to. Um, but I, I do think... If there's an opportunity for the 49ers to get randomly upset, I actually, I don't think the Steelers are going to be perceived as poorly as, you know, maybe a lot of a lot of teams look at them. Um, they're going to get TJ Watt back. They're going to have a good defense. They're going to be at home. I think Pickett is going to improve in his second season. And they don't, I mean, they, they have a, a decent amount of weapons. I don't think that's as bad of a team as people look at them. So if the 49ers lost that game, I wouldn't be surprised. Like that to me is a line where you're looking at, you know, maybe three and a half, four on the road as as an underdog. Um, and maybe, maybe even with the 49ers roster, that's closer to even, even though they, they are on the road. But the Rams to me, that's the one place where I could see them. Like the Rams are not going to have a great defense this year, but they're getting Cooper Cup back. Matthew Stafford's going to be healthy. It's going to be early in the year. And Sean McVay, while he doesn't have a great regular season record at all against the 49ers, um, I just I feel like that first game could physically take a toll to the Niners, whereas the second second week, um, the Rams just they they scare me a little bit as a team that it will be a heavy underdog that could potentially pick up a win. So I'm not I also look. I, I told us. I told you in the last episode. Like I'm high on the Niners. I think they'll, they'll stack wins early, but that to me is going to be a very tough game. Uh, the other ones I'm looking at, 
You might not like this, Mark. But week Uh-oh, seven, yeah. Yeah. Monday right. night. Now you're going there. At Minnesota. Yeah. Because, one, it's going to be a tough environment. Uh, number two, the Vikings will be coming off, in my opinion, kind of an easier week. They're going to be at Chicago, so they're coming home. And the 49ers will be on the tail end of their toughest two-game road stretch <laughs> of the season. And I think that could be... I, I think that could be a tough a tough one for the Niners. I know that Kirk Cousins is is not your favorite quarterback, Mark, but keep an eye out for Week Seven. Uh, I got to ask you: Is Kirk Cousins going to be starting that game Week Seven against the Niners? You think so? I do. Oh, and I also forgot to mention: Yeah, Week Two. I also don't think the 49ers will have Brock Purdy, so they'll be more susceptible to a loss. Week Seven, I think they will have Brock Purdy, but I think that's going to be a tough game. The other one that I, I penciled, Mark, that could. I think surprise some people was week 10 coming off the bye Mm. at Jacksonville. That's one of the few games in which not only you're making the East coast trip, you're playing early Uh, Kyle Shanahan, one in four coming off of buys, not very good. And Jacksonville is a very good team. I know they surprised a lot of people last year, uh, especially winning a playoff game, but they were pretty damn good throughout the year consistently, especially um, their offense. Third year for Trevor Lawrence. I think that's going to be a tough game. So if I had to pick three, it'd be week two against the Rams, week seven against the Vikings, week 10 against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay, interesting. Um, so Kirk Cousins starting week seven for Minnesota against the 49ers. Uh, I think in principle, I can understand what you're saying. However, however, I think you're they overlooking stand. one one major statistic here. Mm-hmm. It's a Monday night game. Kirk Cousins is terrible in prime time, Evan. How could you overlook this? He never wins in prime time. There is no way in hell he's beating the 49ers on Monday night football. Just not happening. That's all I'll say. I thought that was more attributable to the Sunday night slate for Kirk Cousins. Oh, it's I mean, for that's, all that's the real it's for, prime time. It's for all prime time slates. He does not do well when the lights are the brightest. So well, Justin Jefferson does, which is really all I all I care about when it comes Fair to enough. the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, one, I, I was looking at that portion of the schedule as well before the bye. I do think that's kind of a a really tough four week stretch. You have Sunday Night Football against Dallas at home. Dallas is a really good team, one of the better teams in the NFC. And then you have that really tough road trip you're talking about, Cleveland and Minnesota. Whatever you think about the Vikings doesn't matter. That's a a, a tough road trip to have consecutive games on the road. And then you come home on a short week after a Monday game against a very good Cincinnati Bengals team all before the bye. I think at that point, Evan, you are liable to kind of get in a haze. You're you're itching for the bye. You're so ready to have a week off and, and get your bodies and your minds right a little bit. Um, that you can kind of get into a little bit of a funk before that buy. And those are four, while you know a couple of them aren't world beaters by any stretch, they're all not bad teams. I mean, even the Browns, with everything about Deshaun Watson, they have a ton of talent on that team. None of those teams are bad. And all of that consecutively with a couple of them on the road leading up to a bye week could be a tough stretch as well. So I think that might be a, a little bit of an overlooked stretch for the 49ers that could prove to be pretty difficult yeah i'm with you like the eyes automatically are drawn to weeks 12 through 14 you get seattle philadelphia yeah. seattle two of which on the road but um no I, I'm, I'm with you i think if there if there is a tough stretch it is right before the buy which is also why i think to your point last episode why the buy comes at a great time for the 49ers because you're probably going to be licking your wounds a little bit mm-hmm. even if you come out advantageously so that is a great time and a, a great note as well. 